Hey y'all, this is Dina. Welcome to my channel. Y'all, it's Saturday morning. It's about 9.30 almost. And um, y'all, I'm usually in here before now, but I'm a little under the weather today. So I'm going to do a little bit of sewing and do a few things in my house. And I probably will be pretty lazy today. I just, uh, yeah, I just got a cold, I think. So anyway, I wanted to get in here and make this video. I came home yesterday from work and I came in here and started sewing. I want to do dog bandanas for my craft fair. Now, last year I made them the kind that you would slip the collar through. I sent a couple over to my daughters that have doggies. And the ones that I made that were small, they just hung down too far. The um, the bigger dog, the English Bulldog, that one, she just, it, it was just something that it just didn't hang right. It was going to be so hard to determine what size and how big to make it. Well, I've decided to do it like bandana style here, and it's hard to see because I've got so much dark colors on here. But I've already made, um, I've got one, two, three. I've got six here in a small size. So you could see what these look like. And I think they're going to be super, super darling on the dog. And these were so easy to make. Now, when I first started sewing these, I, um, I thought, you know, okay, am I doing this right? And so I added like more of a quarter inch seam allowance on my stitching going around. And then when I started doing the other, the other three, these are also small. I did a little less than a quarter inch and I changed my thread, of course, to black. And I think that having a little less of a seam allowance here or a top stitch is going to work out much better. Okay, so the type of fabric that you should probably use or what I would recommend you using is just plain old cotton, y'all. You know, dogs um, sweat and they get dirty and everything and you would wanna be able to wash these and so forth and I think you can wash them and just, you know, let them air dry or put them in the dryer and then maybe just do a little press if you want them nice and, nice and straight like this. That's what I would do. You know, like dressing your kids go out, you want to dress your dog to look great too. So I can remember whenever we had our dog Scrappy, our Scrappy dog was, he was so special to us. We just miss him so much. And um, he, he was just, he was just the bestest dog ever. And uh, he was our daughter's, our youngest daughter's dog when she was like 18. And we kind of inherited him one day and he became our son. And he was just the best. And unfortunately, he passed away when he was, when he was like 12. He had, I think he had a stroke. But he was the best baby ever. And he loved wearing, I had bought him a yellow rubber ducky rain jacket. And he loved wearing that. And one year, I bought him a super dog costume for Halloween. And he stood tall with a smile on his face. He loved it so much. And um, so anyway, I know that he would love these too. He would just wear them to make mama happy, probably. But anyway, I think he would look handsome. And your dogs will look handsome too, or whoever you choose to give these to. Okay, so I'm gonna quit talking. So I've already made three. These are the small size, of course. I've got three that I made um, with this little doggy with the, you know, the Christmas print. And I think those are gonna be super darling. So I have three of those. I have a little bit of fabric left that I can make a few more. Um, and then I made three of these small ones in this print, which I absolutely love this print. It's so cute. So what I figured out is for your one yard of fabric, which is what I bought, um, you can make three small ones, which the small, the small bandanas are 14 inches. And for the each next size, increase it four inches. So this was made out of a 14 inch square. And then this one, I'm going to do an 18 inch square. And you just want to keep increasing your size. So I'm going to do 14, 18, 22, and 26. Um, I just think that, and you can even go higher than that if you want. Just 
do what, what you think will be best for your dog, okay? If you think that a certain size is going to be way too small, just increase it. I've watched a lot of videos of people, different ways people make their dog bandanas, and it was pretty much what I figured I would do, and so forth, and how to size it and stuff, and a lot of people are doing the same thing. So these are nothing new. Everybody makes them. Um, Dina is just adding them into her craft fair this year, and I think it's going to be fun. So, so for one yard of fabric, you would be able to get three small ones and two medium-sized ones with one yard of fabric. That is what I have learned. This is the end. Now, this is what I have left of my fabric. Just four inches, maybe a little more. And so that's what I have left on there. So that won't be enough to make it. Okay, so I, I went ahead and cut it at the fold. So I would have two already cut and ready to go. So let's move one aside. And what you're gonna need to do after you've got it cut, um, 18 inch square, okay? You're, what you're going to do is you're going to put it corner to corner. Okay, let me stand up here. I'm going to do corner to corner to make sure I get it nice and straight. And I'm going to grab a couple of my pins. Y'all, I hate this when I do this and I add other things in my pins. Because then I have to dig through and, oh, I didn't want the safety pin, you know. I just wished I would quit doing that. Dina, you need to quit doing that. Okay, so I like to do a little pin just on the main points here. Just so I can keep things from moving around when I start to sew. Okay. And so there we go. So all we're going to do is we're going to sew down one side, up the other, leave an opening, and then finish it on off. Now, I like, y'all know I like to iron. Now that I found my halfway point, I'm going to go ahead and iron it. And that way I could try to keep it. Nice and straight. And over, and I like to just iron toward the center. Okay. Okay, so now let's get on over to the sewing machine. Okay, so I've got my fabric, and I'm not going to sew where the fold is. There's no need. It's already together. Um, so I'm not going to fold on that, but I'm just going to sew down and up the other side and so forth. So I'm going to use my down feature. Of course, I'm using my Singer Modern Quilter. Um, as always, I use a two and a half stitch length and that works well for me. And Guterman thread. I'm using black. Okay, so I'm going to start and I'm going to sew down one side and honestly I don't really feel the need to back stitch up here because we're going to top stitch on the outside. But back stitch if you like. I'm removing that pin. And I'm going down. Now I'm lining my presser foot up with the side of the fabric for the inside. On the outside, when I top stitch, I'm doing a little less. Okay, so you're gonna go all the way down. You're gonna get all the close as you can. And then you're gonna pivot your project. And you're going to start sewing back up this other side. Now y'all, the importance of ironing is so things won't move. It's staying so nice. And I really stress ironing. If you sew, you already know that, that you need to iron. Okay, I'm going to get up about halfway up my side over here. And I'm going to backstitch. And I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to drag my fabric, oh, two inches, maybe three. I'm going to line that back up. Backstitch. And I'm going to go sew right off to the end. My daughter said, I know that I found, I know what you can do for your craft fair this year, Mom. 
what she has dog clothing well dog clothing will be tough but we can do this and i think i'll come back and do um maybe like little doggy placemats to put their dog bowl on i'm gonna think about that one how i would want to do that i've seen them all over pinterest where they make them in the shape of a dog bone and that'd be cute i have to just i'll think about that Okay, so I've trimmed off where I left that opening right there, okay? And now what we need to do is we need to do some turning of inside and out here. So, um, what I like to do before I turn, how the points are all pointy, I like to trim, but don't cut into this thread, okay? I know it's hard because it's black, and uh, I know the lighting is not the best over here by my sewing machine. And I'm gonna trim. You can see right there is where the peak of where my um, where my sewing is. So I did not cut into that. And then I'm gonna do this right here. And you could trim that off too. Okay, y'all. It's one week and my craft room is still clean. I am so proud of myself. Now I don't craft a whole lot on like Thursdays usually, um, because sometimes when I come home from work I'm just so tired okay so that's why but pretty much I've been in here almost every day this week okay so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it inside out I like to grab those points so you can poke them out really well okay I'm gonna pull it out through the little opening you left here Pulling, putting the pretty side of the fabric on the outside Come on here. Let me see if I can reach and pull. Get it through. Sometimes I don't leave my holes as maybe as large as I should, but I make it work. Okay, I'm reaching my thumb in there because I want to get this point. And now I want to grab the other one so we can have a half a square pretty much is what it is. So it gives you your triangle almost. Okay, so what I like to do is I've been using my bone folder. I don't have like a, a like something that pokes out points or whatever. My bone folder, just gently put it up in there. Just kind of make sure that you get your your little points or whatever you choose. Um, just kind of get that up in there so you can try to get your point. Okay, got one more point. Like that. There you go. So that looks really good. Okay, now you know the step. We're going to go back and iron. Okay, so now let's iron. Um, I like to make sure that my the seams on the side, everything is nice and flat. Sometimes you might have to roll it a little bit to get it where you want it. And then I'm gonna start at the edge and work my way out. My pressing, and then press down that fold. I think these are gonna be a good seller. I really do. People are so into their pets these days. I mean, they always have, but it seems like it's all the craze to dress your dog. And your dog needs to be looking good too. So, get that press. And don't you just love the fabric? The fabric I'm using came from Joann's. If you saw my haul the other day, Thursday, um, yeah. And I've already used this one up. I might have to invest in a little more. And see how I didn't iron down that good, nice and flat on that edge. So, just go take your fingers and kind of line up in there and there you go okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch on all three sides and y'all our bandana will be done so let's get back over okay so now we're going to do our last final top stitch 
and I'm going to start on one side. This is the side that you didn't have to sew inside, okay? But I'm going to start on the side, and I want to do a little smaller um, top stitch, not as wide as what I use. As you all know, I usually just use the edge of my, my presser foot as the guide. For this one, I'm gonna go in a little bit. I want it to be a little less. If you have a hard time keeping it lined up, a nice thing to do is add a little washi tape, like where you would like to keep your fabric, and it will help to keep it as a guide. So you can add a little washi tape. I normally don't do that. I can kind of see what I'm doing, but if you're new to sewing, I'm going to lift that up. I want to get that. Oop, I don't want my tape to go down on the edge of there. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it right there. And I do have little lines underneath my, right here, on my machine as well. But, just in case you need that extra guide. Okay. Make sure I got my thread looking good. You know, there was someone that commented the other day and I thought it was so sweet. Um, she commented and said how much she loved my sewing videos and how she gets a cup of coffee and just watches. Thank you, that was the sweetest thing ever. I told my husband about that and he's like, oh, that's so sweet. So as you see, my fabric is over a little bit under my presser foot, okay? And, um, I'm just gonna keep going. I don't I typically don't like to go too fast when I'm doing the top stitching. I want to try to keep it as nice and straight as I can. Because you know no dog wants to wear what wh wants to wear the top stitching on his bandana that's not straight or at least as straight as we can get it. Okay, I'm almost down to the bottom. When I get down here to this bottom, take my project and I'm just gonna pivot and it's lined up nicely already. So I'm just gonna keep on sewing right off the edge. Y'all, and y'all, I just want to tell you, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video for Sweet Sheila's channel, and y'all, thank you everyone that went over and subscribed to her. She is just, she is just the sweetest, and she's so creative. She just has her own style, and I just love how proud she is of everything she does, as we all should be, and she's just a great teacher, y'all. Go give her a chance if you haven't. Um, but yeah, I think she increased more than 500. So thank you to those 500. Appreciate you so much. And y'all, I think I'm going to start doing like a weekly shout out of other channels. I really love helping other channels because I know how it feels to start out and not grow very fast and all that. And I just feel blessed. To, I've been on YouTube now, um, five years and, um, I just feel blessed of how much my channel has grown and I'm grateful, truly, truly grateful. And um, but yeah, so I think I'm gonna start just choosing channels that I, you know, and y'all know I've helped channels in the past and I'm gonna, I think it's good to just keep doing that. We all should help each other and uh, we can't grow without all of your help and so forth. We all have goals. There's some people that have a thousand subscriber goal. There's some people that have, you know, a 10,000 subscriber goal. And like me, I'm rolling up at 60,000 and I'm so grateful. And, um, you know, I just am appreciative. Of course, I have a 100,000 subscriber goal. And one day, I will hit that one day and I'll be patient. So, yes, I think it's important for us to help each other. We are at the end, friends. I'm going to trim this. And let's get back over to that ironing board because you know what has to happen. Ironing. Okay, the last press for this sweet bandana. 
You know, most of the time you buy bandanas, you got to fold it in half. This one is ready to go. And it's so pretty. Get that pressed out. Now let's look at the difference between the medium and the small. This is a medium one. Okay, let me grab the small one and I'll use the other print. And you can see there's the difference. Okay, there's the difference. So it gave us like that extra space. Okay, I'll make sure I can get that. Out. There you go. So you can see it gave us that extra little bit. Now, on the small ones, if they're still, if your dog is like so small, just use these dimensions and just roll it. And then tie it. And I think that would be the cutest way anyway. So I have a little teddy bear here. We're going to tie on one of these and see how it looks. Okay, here is a bear that I have had a long time. He actually has a pair of pajama pants and a, and a sweatshirt that he came with, and I've had him forever. I think I've got him at Aeropostale at one time when they were having him for $5, and I've never gotten rid of him. My sister and I actually were shopping one day, and we happened to see them, and so we, we both got one. But I don't have a dog, so I figure I will use my bear to try it on. And I think that this bear would probably do best with the medium bandana, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try it on. I'm going to kind of roll it down a little bit like this, okay? And then I'm just going to put it on my sweet bear. And yes, a medium would look absolutely perfect on him. Darling. Darling, darling, look at that. How cute is he? I love him. You look so good with your bandana. I need to make him a bear one. How cute is this? This is going to be perfect. Perfect, perfect. Of course, when you put on the dog, you tie in a double knot. But how cute is this? The little bear is wearing it with style, and he is just a doll. Anyway, y'all, I hope that you will give this a try. I hope that you have an excellent Saturday. Um, I'm probably going to do a little bit more sewing. I want to try to sew up as many bandanas as I can. Um, and I'm going to try to see if maybe I can do, y'all, I'm going to try to do maybe 10 of each size or eight of each size. I don't know how well they're gonna go, but I really have a good feeling about these, just like I do the scrunchies. And I think it's simply precious. Um, the way to cut costs whenever you're making these is to make sure you buy your fabric on sale. Don't buy anything full price, unless you go to Walmart and it's cheaper. Um, I have quite a bit of pet fabric, animal fabric, doggy fabrics. I have some of this for cats, so I'm going to make a few for cats. I really can't see cats wearing them as much as dogs would, but I'm not a cat person, so I don't have a cat. So you know your cat, and if your cat would wear it, it would look precious, 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 little furry things. But anyway, just go and just um, find your fabrics on sale and so forth, and just sew away. This is a beginner-friendly project y'all know i just do a lot of beginner friendly projects and this one is perfect simply perfect for my bear so this would be like a medium medium sized dog or maybe an extra like maybe an extra small not an extra small an extra large small dog I guess if that's a saying, I don't know. But anyway, y'all, okay. Um, I'm going to quit rambling on. Let's quickly talk about pricing for this, okay? One yard of this fabric cost me $9, I believe. So one yard, okay? I got five bandanas out of one, one yard. I think I'm going to do my bandanas. I think my dog bandanas are going to go for probably between $8 and $10. I'm thinking they might just do $10. I might just do a $10 and call it even there. Um, or maybe I'll do $10 or maybe two for, two for $18 or something like that. Um, but I think that they'll be super cute. And I think they're going to be a great addition to my craft fair. Um... I have to decide how I'm going to display them because I want to display them well so they'll they will sell and um yeah it's important how you display y'all
Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching me and my Mr. Bear say have a great Saturday. I love you guys. Thank you for all your subscribing and finger thumbs ups and all that stuff. What you don't realize is every time you thumbs up, that really helps my channel. And it helps YouTube to be able to maybe recommend my videos to other people that aren't subscribed. And y'all, there are about 50% of people that do watch me that are not subscribed. So please, if you would hit that subscribe button, I'd appreciate it so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And I hope you will have a wonderful day. Bye.